a landing skid, take off his bed on the trolley. Now, rocket fire is the main fo form of propulsion, I think, these days, is a northern rocket. But it's good as an, as an assist in many ways. But to give you an idea of how it compared with its contemporaries, I was normally used to a climb speed of about 200, 220 miles an hour, and climb, a rate of climb of 3,000 plus or minus um, feet a minute in the piston engines we had at the end of the war. When I flew this, it had a climb speed of 450 miles an hour and a rate of climb of 16,000 feet a minute. And believe you me, you had to have your wits about you to keep up. <laughs> it was ahead of you most of the time. I don't think it would have taken at least three familiarization flights to feel comfortable with yourself. And when you got up to height, for example, I took it up to 32,000, you had to uh, not have lost it on the way up your brain's been left behind, <laughs> because when you got to the top, you had to throttle back. This was a throttleable rocket too, which was an innovation. You had to throttle back immediately, because once you leveled off, you were into compressibility troubles at high maximum. So, it was a difficult airplane to fly. When you, um, as John said, the problem with it was the very volatile fuels, hydrogen peroxide being the main fuel concentrate of hydrogen peroxide. And apart from nitrogen, um, what's the very heavy one, John? Nitrate to <coughs> most explosive fuel. Many of it's a nitrate. Yes, I mean, yes. Anyway, this is a very, very explosive fuel. And talking about comfort, I was very impressed with the cockpit of this airplane. It was very comfortable. In fact, you sat on the thing, which was rather like an armchair, with beautifully rounded uh, arms for your, for your arms to rest on. Until I found that these arms were hydrogen peroxide fuel tanks. <laughs> <laughs> So it doesn't make you the happiest boy. <laughs> and um, I asked um, Dr. Walter, the inventor of the rocket, uh, this particular type of rocket engine, what would happen? I wasn't flying in combat, of course, it was after the war. He said that if you were flying in combat and a bullet penetrated this and let the oxygen, the hydrogen, the um, hydrogen peroxide leak, that they had done tests and the pilot would be melted within nine minutes. Even though you're wearing an, a non-organic suit. But um, there you are. That, so the German pilots had a very tough time. Also, although you had a jettison system on it, you had to land dead stick and make absolutely sure that not a cupful of fuel was left in the system, because if there was, on the impact of landing would cause a violent explosion. And every time that happened, it was a fatal accident. And one has to remember, the Germans flying this type of aircraft had about 40 of these operational fatal accidents. So it was a very, very difficult airplane to fly. And um, innovation is a wonderful thing, but you usually have to pay a penalty if you design a lot of innovation into an airplane. The penalty being to get the bugs out of the innovation. Let me show you another one. 